The new version of App Insights, often referred to as version 2, will store all of its logs inside of Azure Log Analytics. You still write to the Azure Insights, so in this example I'm going to write a C Sharp function which has an HTTP trigger and it's going to write to the App Insights in turn which will go and store it in the Log Analytics. So the next piece I'll have here is the setup for that. So here you can see that this is Application Insights and you can see the workspace there so you can see it's using the new version otherwise you wouldn't see that part that's highlighted. Next we're going to go and write the function, there's a function so you'll see it here, this is the simplest way to write a function so I've called my function ftlog. Okay so I've gone and created a function app and under that you'll see it's the cheapest uh, app that I could buy, this, the plan. Go and look at a list of the functions so you can see I've built the function that I'm going to call HTTP triggered. And you can see it's took to the instance that I'm interested in, so I don't have to provide anything else. Now what I can do is look at the code and test. So I've just written the uncompiled c -sharp code in here that I wanted to take in a whole lot of parameters from the body of the request, the, the HTTP request. Okay, most of the structure is given to you. And I've just emptied out the inside bits and uh, cleaned them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab the request here. Yeah? and uh, I'm going to stick it into a string, I'm popping it into uh, JSON, and then from there it's pretty easy to, to go and uh, pull out the data. So I've got an event ID, I've got an error type, I've got an error message, I've got a correlation ID that I might want to tie back with. In my case I've got a workflow ID because I want that to tie, and I've got the workflow URL, this is the instance of the workflow, not the actual workflow itself, it'll take you into the specific instance that this ran. And this is the flow display name, so that's the workflow display name. Okay, so the first thing I do is I go and create this dictionary object, which is just a list of my custom properties. Okay, and in there I'm going to stick the correlation ID that we've just gotten, the workflow ID, the workflow URL, and the display name of the workflow. And I'm going to stick those into those custom properties. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I got to use this using statement and I open up this log. Okay, and then I add the begin scope to it and I add the custom properties to it. Now, you can do it. You could do it a lot simpler than this if you wanted to, but I wanted to have different types of errors because it just helps me when I'm trying to build dashboards. I've put the begin scope um, around the, each of the logs that I'm going to do. So I'm saying if it's debug or critical or warning, I, w I wanted to go and do this. This log here has an override. Um, the first one is uh, the, the, you know, whether you want it to be critical or not. Um, the event ID is, is integer. So, you know, you might want to use that to uniquely identify what you're interested in. And then I'm just throwing in the generic message, which will go into the message object. You can see I have an information one here. So, you know, various, whatever people want to throw, they, they're welcome to do. You may want to consider also sticking on flags around uh, what logging to turn on. So, you know, you could use something like app config out of Azure. It's pretty useful there. And then I'm just going and returning if it's okay. So the easiest thing to do is just go and test it once you've written your code. And you can see I've got a key here. And it's, a, it's worth having a look at the body of the message. So all I'm doing is taking this body. I'm saying, yep, this looks pretty good. Uh, this coming from the test rig. So I'm going to hit run. And I get a 200, which is great. Okay, what I can also do here is I want to just go and check that it's working in Postman. So I can just say, go and get function. Um, I'm going to use the default key, but if you just copy this here, then what you can do is you can open up Postman. And you can see, uh, so what I've done is I've pasted that whole URL in there, including the code, which is the key, the default key. Um, and you can see I've just gone and put in the same thing, but you can see I've just said this comes from Postman, so we'll see the difference. And you can see I've got a 200 response, meaning it's, it's come through correctly. 